Taking care of Ewing. <laughs> we aim to please. Switch it to the other because oh, we're. Oh no, we're not there yet. We'll get started in a few minutes. I'm early. I was thinking I was a few minutes behind. No, put it on your computer thing so I just went Yeah, you can. By the time I get back in there. <laughs> there you go. Happy New Year. Right? Nice. Crazy, isn't it? I mean, it's a wind, it's a, is it a snow and, is it a rain jacket? And it's kind of a ski jacket. Like, it's warm, right? Because it feels like it's got layers inside. Because, like, my winter, my snow, oh, yeah, it's a snow. Oh, it's a snow. And it feels like it's water. No. Oh, yeah. It's like, my rain jacket is just this. It's like, you know, you know. You're all so quiet. You must be expecting something. Well, good morning. Good morning. And happy new year. Can you believe it is 2022? No, I can't. I cannot either. I can't believe it. It's kind of amazing to even think along those lines. But, uh, you know, every day with Jesus is a great day. So... Let's start our day with prayer and just thanking the Lord for 
getting us through 2021 and uh, that he will get, get us through um, 2022. So Father, we thank you so much that you have been so good to us in 2021. Lord, it has been difficult over the last past two years or so. Things in our governments, things in this world, things in our communities have uh, been devastated. Things have been uh, turned on end, so to speak. But yet, Lord, you still have not returned. And so you must have more people that you want to save. You must have more folks that you want to uh, bring into your kingdom. Father, you've been gracious to us. And Lord, I believe that you are wanting to be gracious to them. And so, Father, help us to be strong. Help us to move forward in your strength, but also, Lord, in your grace. And today, Lord, as we start out this new year with you in your word, may we just continue to remember your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. Remember your forgiveness and to share that with others so that they also might get saved. Thank you, Lord, for your word that is a lamp unto our feet in such a dark, dark world. As we open it up today, Lord, we ask that you would teach us, that you would guide us, and that you would lead us into all truth. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, prayer requests. Operation Christmas Child, um, our nation, pray for our government, pray for our allies, uh, especially Israel and their peace, and then pray for our family, our friends, our communities, that they would come to know the Lord. Other names and things that are on our list, um, <clears throat> pray for our, our youth, uh, that they would continue in the Lord, uh, especially in a world that has become so... Uh, depraved um, and evil. So continue to pray uh, for them. Pray for wisdom for David and how he leads um, our youth. Um, Jim with cancer. Jimmy with back problems. Dory, her cancer. Mary Gabbert with cancer. Susie Muckridge with cancer. Jody and her medical. How's it going? Um, I went to the dermatologist and um, there's nothing more he can do. Me. Okay. So it's up to the rheumatologist, and right now my body's uh, reacting against itself, so I'm losing tons of air. And being a girl, that's really super difficult. Yes. Yeah. I remember my mom going through that, and she wrote a little prayer out to the Lord. Lord, you know, you said in your word that a woman's hair is her crowning glory. Why are you taking mine? <laughs> you know, and uh, anyhow, um, so that that is difficult. So we will continue to pray for you. And Frank, how's your cancer going? He goes for scans next month. Next month? Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, the end of this month. The end of this January. Yeah. Forgot it's January. It's January, <laughs> yes. So. <clears throat> so. Well, we'll pray that those turn out very well. So, Stan in Virginia and health-related uh, issues. Again, if you can keep my dad and Robin's dad uh, in prayer. Um, Jackie Sutcliffe and her medical. Judy Peabody's mom for health. Uh, Bert Hackett with cancer. Pam and her medical, although she seems to be doing pretty well right now. Um, Terry Everett uh, and his health concerns. I continue to pray for little Gustav, that is uh, Stephen um, and Geneva Bushy's uh, little guy. Um, last I heard, Judy, you said he's doing pretty well. So I'm, since you're here and, and you just came in, why don't you give us an update? He, he was seven pounds down since he was born and lost a lot of weight, which was like the first concern before his uh, seizure started. And he's now over nine. I didn't have that here, so. I didn't have a hard time posing them for pictures. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's.
that's good. But the dude that was seen through that is for a while, so we'll do it. Yeah. So, yeah, continue to pray for him. He might have some bumps and lumps along the way, but uh, praise the Lord that he is doing better. Um, so continue to pray for, for that little guy. Uh, Dean, uh, with some medical. Uh, Helen Forbes, um, hospice, or grandson, rather, on hospice. Um, some friends of ours, uh, Rod and Debbie Kroom, um, with uh, COVID-related issues. Um, so some health-related things there. Um, Kendra Waddell, uh, loss of a, a, a good friend. Um, Sweden Marie, medical. Um, Sarah, back problems. Dolly, back problems. And then I got an update last night, um, late, from Dorothy concerning Zara. And uh, she uh, was kind of dealing with some COVID issues, and they flew her um, up to Portland area, and she was doing a lot better. Um, and they might even be able to, uh, to come home this, uh, this next week or maybe even a little bit earlier. Um, it was cute that she sent me a picture of uh, the little um, frown on the face from uh, the nurse having to tape the oxygen line to little Zara's um, nose and, and her face. She was not having that. So anyhow, um, but it was quite a little pouty face with the lip sticking out. And I think, well, yeah, that's somehow, that's sometimes how I feel like I react to what God does in my life. Hey, look, I'm trying to help you. <laughs> uh, but why are you taping this to my face? <laughs> you know, so <clears throat> other prayer requests or things that uh, you need to go through, Jody. The Brit and the Cook family. Yeah. Um, so... We all know Al, Al's Garage. He fixes a lot of cars in our community. And of course, Tina Deku, Britain uh, family, uh, passed away um, from long complications because of COVID, um, as well as other issues that she had. Um, so continue to pray for, for Al. Uh, she passed away um, on Christmas Day. And I did chat with him a little bit um, via text and and even a little bit before that uh, and whatnot and I think he kind of knew that this was heading in this direction um, and you know sometimes God gives us the ability to know ahead of time in a sense and kind of prepare emotionally for it um, and then other times um, it's just in a blink of an eye they're gone uh, but either way it's, it's difficult, so pray for um, the families. Pray for, for those that are experiencing loss and uh, some good, good folks. So continue to pray for, for them. And praise report, uh, Bobby Driscoll, um, yeah. you know, he came close to dying with the infection and everything, and mm -hmm. they, they couldn't put a knee in. Well, he's been the <clears throat> past the surgery and everything else, and, mm -hmm. uh, both doctors said we don't want to see you again. Oh, good. And physical therapy, all that is over with. And uh, good. The best thing is, you told uh, Bill that uh, this was strictly because of all the prayer, and got down on his knees and thanked the Lord. So, awesome. That's yeah. great. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yep. So God is good. He has done so many things for us. It's amazing. So. God is good. Anything else, Lisa? Um, so we have a praise request, uh, or praise um, report. Our uh, Greg's brother and sister-in-law and kids went to church awesome. around Christmas time, so uh -huh. that was really nice to hear about. Um, like prayer for Robinelli. She just lost her husband. And um, I don't know if I'd do the next one without crying. <laughs> um, we had a hit and run in our family. It's uh, Greg's cousin's in law. And uh, he was 16 years old on Christmas Day. So the family is uh, going through a lot right now. Yeah. Not a good situation. So um, yeah. it's the Lanigan family. Could you Lanigan. please pray for them? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, 
that's difficult. There's been a couple of those, it seems like, lately in the news. So, um, yes, not easy to go through. So, anybody else? I need to ask a question before I bring it up. Was that Jim McMillan you guys took out? Yep. Jim McMillan's a good friend. He passed away. And I was supposed to have Christmas dinner with him. Just got married about three, four weeks ago. Yeah. And they still, I haven't heard what caused it, but he's no longer with us. Yeah. And you can ask us all you I, want, but we are probably not going to answer you. So you have to get your answer. Yeah, I figured you wouldn't answer. That's why I looked over there. Yeah. I can't give you the answer either. Yeah. I'm not allowed to give uh, any answers either. So thankfully you did. So. Well, Somebody else gave you the answer. Because they called so. me and they said, you know, we yeah. lost Jim. And Robin wanted you to know. And I I couldn't place him. Yeah. But then I figured it out. Yeah, I know you guys used to do your... Yeah. Your meetings here for you know, veterans. Veterans and meetings. So, yeah, he's yeah. a veteran of Vietnam. Yeah. He's, he's a relatively young man. Only in the seventies, man. Uh, huh? Seventies. Only in the seventies. That, that's still young, right? Seventies. Well, that's still young. young. <laughs> for, hey, for me. You know, that's... <laughs> uh, and Robin, did you have your hand up? Yeah. Okay, I couldn't see it because Lou's head was in the way. So. <laughs> the third time. So you live in the big city, you're taking some big chances, right? Yeah, exactly. And just so, um, yeah. also just the, you know, just the, <coughs> you know, unsafe family members and yeah. stuff will come to the Lord. And, and this new year, I was going to read this. This is a really cool thing my, my friend uh, Shirley Buckmaster sent me. It kind of reminds me like this studies. It says Flight 2022 instructions. Good morning and welcome to Flight 2022. We are prayed to take off into the new year. Please make sure your positive attitude and gratitude are secured and locked in the upright position. All self-destruct devices, pity, anger, selfishness, pride, or resentment, resentment should be turned off at this time. All negativity and hurt and discouragement should be put away. Should you lose your positive attitude under pressure during this flight, reach up and pull down a prayer. Prayers will automatically be activated by faith. Once your faith is activated, you can assist other passengers who are of little faith. There will be no baggage allowed on this flight. God, our captain, has cleared us for takeoff. Destination greatness. Wishing you a new year filled with new hope, new joy, new blessings. Stay blessed and welcome in 2022. That came at a really good time. Yes. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> So pray for people. Uh, pray for the guy that hit Alex's car. He was drunk driving. Pray that he's got insurance and whatnot. So um, and pray that Alex's car can be fixed because if it can't be, and they total it. Of course, you know the cost of um, cars, used cars, are up, and so you don't get as much um, in the long run. So it's frustrating thing. But yeah, this is number three. So. And then uh, somebody off one of my apps, Kimba Lowry, prayed for 
prayer for their family. They're all sick right now. So. Okay. Yeah, there's a few folks with the COVID variant that's out there now, Omicron, and yet they said that they believe the peak is going to be January 9th. So, which is good because most people aren't affected too bad by it. So, but pray for folks that are going through tough times. So, well, let's pray and give these to the Lord. Father, thank you so much for your blessings. Thank you, Lord, also for the difficulties. Lord, even as Paul said in Philippians 4, that we ought not to be anxious for anything, but in everything through prayer, supplication, and with thanksgiving, make our requests. And Father, you will give us a peace that passes understanding, that guards our hearts and our minds. And so, Father, in each of these situations, we pray that you would go to work, that, Father, your will would be done, even if it's something that we don't understand, even if it's a direction that we can't necessarily comprehend, I pray, Father, that you would give us a peace in our hearts and in our minds, that you're doing it for our benefit because you're a good God. You love us deeply, and you want what's best for us, even when we can't see it and understand it. So, Father, help us to trust you in each of these cases. But Lord, help us to continue to pray. Help us to continue to ask, knowing, Lord, that you are our great physician. You are our healer. And so, Father, we bring these to you. We also pray, Lord, for Israel and her peace. We pray for governments, Lord, to turn away from selfishness and back to you. Lord, we pray for our Operation Christmas Child boxes that, Father, not only will the kids have uh, got a nice little um, gift, but, Father, that they would find you the greatest gift that was ever given. And that, Father, they would hold on to you for the rest of their lives. So, Lord, thank you for hearing our prayers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Bible study, men's prayer breakfast, Friday, 7 a.m. It's Bible Church, and the menu is? French toast. French toast. There you go. And uh, youth study, um, Sunday mornings here at 1030. And then, you know, I was doing the uh, amazing facts that will blow your mind. Um, but then I thought, well, you know what, this year we're going to do the promises or promises of the Lord um, that we know in the scripture. So Isaiah 41, verse 10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And the promises of the Lord in Christ Jesus are yea and and what does amen mean? So be it. So be it. So be it. Yeah. Birthdays. I forgot to look at the book. So if you have a birthday, I'm sure you're not going to say anything, but next week <laughs> I'll so. And then, of course, giving you guys know the box, box, and box. <clears throat> and then today we're going to be talking about grace. But let's... Uh, <coughs> Let's sing some praise songs. We stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the
your foe, still your love fought for me.
And Father, we are so grateful that you have given to us your forgiveness <clears throat> and grace, your unmerited, undeserved, unearned favor. And Father, I know that this time of year, when we start a new year, a lot of people say, hey, this is a great opportunity. The slate has been wiped clean. But Father, you did that many, many years ago. You died for all of our sin. Lord, help us to just continue to love you, to continue to move forward in your word and in your direction. Knowing, Lord, that our slate was clean a long time ago. Father, thank you that you have shown to us your grace so that we might in turn do the same thing for others, that they might see you, know you, and understand your grace and forgiveness. We pray that you would have been blessed with our worship and may we continue to bless you each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right. Grace is sufficient. So you can turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. It's almost like it was planned, huh? Second Corinthians chapter 12. And next week we'll get back into our chapter by chapter, verse by verse study in Romans. Um, but today, being that it's kind of the beginning of 2022, I thought, well, let's kind of pick a theme <laughs> for the next year. So, <clears throat> now, let me give you a little bit of background before we jump right in. In the prior chapter, Paul has been addressing the church at Corinth concerning false teachers and teachers of the church that were just not teaching right, teaching a different Jesus, teaching a different uh, type of, of uh, prophecy, those kinds of things. And they were boasting in their abilities and, and things of that nature. And so Paul said, you know, I'm going to boast in my weakness because I'm, I'm nobody special. God can use anybody and I am just as big a jerk as the next guy. Uh, but I'm not going to sit and pretend to, uh, to tell you that I, I am more important or more godly than the next person. In fact, Paul would say later on in his life that he was the chiefest of sinners. He was the worst sinner. And so that's where we find ourselves as we move into this chapter 12. And so Paul would say that this boasting will do no good, <clears throat> but I must go on. So he does ask the people to kind of humor him a little bit and listen to what the Lord has to say through him. And so he says, I will reluctantly tell you about visions and revelations from the Lord. I was caught up. Now, in some of your translations, it doesn't say I was caught up. Paul speaks in the third person, but because we're in the New Living Translation, they've already done the conversion for you. Because like in the King James and some of those versions, in chapters, or in, in verse 7 rather, Paul then says essentially, I was the guy that I'm speaking of. So they've actually gone back to verse uh, 2 here and put it in first person because Paul is in an effort not to boast about himself, basically saying, I know a guy who had some visions from the Lord, revelations. And then he, in verse 7, says, yeah, that was me. Um, and so they've already done the work for us here. In verse 2, he says, I was caught up into the third heaven 14 years ago. So how long had Paul not told anybody about this? 14 years, which shows a tremendous amount of humility because, boy, when the Lord shows me something, I want to share it. Unless, of course, he says, don't. 
Well, and some of that Paul will get into here in just a minute. Whether I was in the body or out of the body, out of my body, I don't know. Only God knows, yes. Only God knows whether I was in my body or outside my body. But I don't know. Paul is speaking to these folks there in church, and it might be a church maybe similar uh, to ours in the respect of we like to have a conversation. And so I, I can imagine that Paul reiterates the point that he doesn't know whether he was in his body or whether he was taken to heaven or what the case was. Somebody might have, are you sure that you weren't out of your body? Or And so he says it a second time. <clears throat> he says, yes, only God knows. I don't know. But what I do know is that I was caught up to paradise and heard things so out uh, astounding that I can they cannot be expressed in words no human is allowed to tell which is interesting because if you go to heaven paradise some of those things as many of the books that we have seen come out over the decades um, hey I went to heaven and this is what I saw and this is what I heard things of that nature what Paul heard not what he's seen but rather what he's heard, he said, I can't talk about. Yeah, I got caught up. I went to heaven, but I can't tell you what I heard. Why? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Why? Because God basically said, this isn't something that people are going to understand, so I don't want you to talk about it. There's a lot of things that maybe we don't understand, and maybe Paul didn't even himself. Think about it. If you were to go back, let's say, a hundred years ago, and you took your cell phone with you. What would happen when you started talking to people and telling them about, you know, cars that could go, you know, two, three hundred miles an hour or um, airplanes flying um, from nation to nation in just a handful of hours or the fact that you can talk on a telephone without even having a wire attached to it. Some of it just doesn't even sound, you know what I mean? And you can think about even in, in your generation or, or your period of time, and you can think back to when you thought, that's crazy, there's no way that that could happen. You know, beam me up, Scotty, and having little, and yet we walk around with computers that used to be ginormous and they fit in the, the palm of your hand. Uh, they can broadcast live so whoever tunes in from anywhere in the world can hear. They would say, you are nuts, you're crazy, you don't know what you're talking about, we think we need to put you in a mental institution, things of that nature. There's a reason that God doesn't tell us things. There's a reason that we don't always see the big picture. It's hard for a little person like Zara to understand why she needs um, an oxygen tube taped to her face so that she can uh, have the assistance to be able to breathe. There's a lot of things that we don't understand, but that doesn't mean that it's not what God has in store for you. You've got to trust that. And Paul is saying, look, I can't tell you. He told me not to. And so Paul, very humbly, instead of boasting about these things, um, Paul rather says, I I'm not going to, but I will tell you, yes, I was caught up. The Lord spoke to me. He shared a lot of things, but I really can't tell you because you're not necessarily going to understand. But he doesn't really go into that because then that would be boasting. Well, I understand, but you do not. And boy, how many times do pastors or supposed prophets that come and share say things like that well i can i can understand but you don't get it i think any of us can understand it it's a matter of timing when does god want you to understand when does god want to share with you those things i don't always know that how come we don't share with our kids when they're four and five years old about the the blessings and benefits of being married well because they're just not going to get it they're too worried about catching cooties and things of that nature you know ew boys ew girls you know 
that kind of thing. They don't understand. But when the time is right, then God un unveils, he uh, uh, opens up, he shares with us the truth. And Paul goes on here in verse 5, saying that that experience is worth boasting about, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not, I haven't said anything to you for 14 years. I haven't brought it up. Yes, I could boast about it, but what good does that do? I will boast only about my weaknesses. Why? Well, I'm kind of a lame duck. You know, I'm a loser. I'm a wimp. I thought I was a tough guy, um, but no, I'm a nobody. I'm nobody special. I thought I was, but... So Paul would go on to say in verse 6, If I wanted to boast, I would be no fool in doing so. Fool meaning worldly. Um, I wouldn't be doing it for a worldly purpose or a selfish purpose. <clears throat> I would do, be doing it for good because I would be telling the truth. Paul's saying, I'm not just making this up because some of the other prophets and the people that are kind of coming to the church and trying to, you know, be somebody and trying to make a name for themselves, uh, in a sense, among the, the churchgoers, they're not telling you the truth. They're, they're feeding you a different Jesus, a different gospel. And it's just not right. Now, I, I could come and I could say, hey, I actually went to heaven. I actually got to hear the things of the Lord, but I can't share those with you. Maybe because they, they wouldn't understand, but God didn't give me permission to share it. And yeah, that'd be cool to be able to boast about that, but what good does that do? So what? You went to heaven. Hey, we're all going to be there at some point. We're all going to understand, right? Jesus says in his word that when we see him, we will be like him, knowing how many things? All things, okay? So we're all going to get there at some point. Maybe it's just a matter of spiritual grade level. Some of us might still be in first grade or junior high. Some of us might be college, you know what I mean? So... Um, Paul just simply says here, I want you to know that I'm telling you the truth, I'm not just making this up for show. So <clears throat> even um, at that, um, I, I want you to know I wouldn't be foolish in doing so, but I won't do it because I, I don't want anyone to give me credit beyond what they can see in my life or hear in my message even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God. <clears throat> Paul says simply this, I could boast about these things, but really I'm not going to. If I'm going to boast about anything, it's going to be my weakness. Yeah, you could say, wow, you are a spiritual guy if God pulled you into heaven. That can happen to anybody. Um, but I don't want to take credit for any of this. I'm just going to give you the message. I'm going to share the message, and the message is good. Jesus loves you. His grace, his mercy, his kindness is there and available for you. So he says, <clears throat> um, even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God, I'm going to boast in my, my weakness. So to keep me from becoming proud, I was given, in the idea of a gift, I was given a thorn in the flesh. Oh, that doesn't sound very gifty. You open up that present for Christmas and you look inside and it's a giant thorn. What? Hey, wait a minute, Lord. You know, you brought me up to heaven. Isn't that special? Isn't that cool? Isn't that awesome? Uh, yeah, but just in case you think that you're more special than the next guy, I'm going to give you a gift. What gift is that? A thorn in the flesh, meaning something was bothering him regularly. A messenger from Satan. God gave Satan permission to afflict Paul's body with some kind of something. Many thoughts are out there. People would say that he had problems with his eyes. People would say that it was the malaria um, for that area that would cause a lot of uh, problems for him. Paul doesn't go into it. What he just says is this is a gift from God. Now, how many of you look at the troubles and the difficulties from 2020, 2021, and say, thank you, Lord, for all of the misery. It is such a blessing. It's such a gift. COVID, woo, you know, masks, amen. You know, we don't do that. What do we usually do? Complain. 
And yet God says, don't do that. I don't want you to complain. Paul says here, it's a gift. Really? Paul, maybe there really is something wrong with you. Maybe you do need some mental assistance or something. Well, he says here, it was a messenger from Satan. <laughs> Why Satan? Because Satan comes to what? Steal, kill, and he does. And so he says, also, it was to keep me from becoming proud. Boy, when something special happens to you, something unique that God is doing in your life, what's the first thing that goes through your mind? Wow, I must be doing really good. And God just decided, well, then I'm going to bless Kirk. He's doing such a good job. But God reigns on the just and the unjust. God gives grace to everybody. It's available to anyone, whether you're good, bad, or otherwise. He died one time for how many sins of the world? All of them. So he's blessed everybody. You and I are no more special than the person that doesn't believe. The only difference is, is we've found forgiveness and grace in the eyes of God. And so <clears throat> I think there are times that we as Christians, we as a church can become proud. So there are times that the Lord might say, you know, I don't want you to become proud. Therefore, I might poke you a little bit, send something your way just to, to remind you that I am where it's at. So Paul says, because of this problem of the flesh that he had, three different times I beg the Lord to take it away. How many of you, when you have a problem, pray only three times? <laughs> oh, good. Okay, I'm not the only one. I, I might pray three times in five minutes, you know. <laughs> I might pray lots more than that. But Paul is different. He just says, you know what, I'm going to pray three times, and if it doesn't happen, then... Praise the Lord. This is what I've got going on. So three times he begged the Lord to take it away. And each time the Lord said, what? My grace is sufficient or my grace is all you need. Hmm. That's all I need is just grace. Yes. What is grace? <coughs> Unmerited, unearned, and undeserved favor from God. My grace is sufficient. Now, some of us read that in a kind of a negative. That's enough, Paul. That's all you get. My grace is sufficient. End of story. But that's not really what God is saying there. He's just saying it's my grace. It doesn't matter what, what word you emphasize here. My grace is sufficient. My <coughs> grace, focusing on the undeserving portion, is sufficient or my grace is sufficient it means it's it's going to meet all of my needs my grace is sufficient it's all you need it doesn't matter what emphasis you put on any one of those words in that sentence what god is saying is you got to trust me because i am going to meet the needs that i have already planned and in store for you so, Paul would go on to say <clears throat> um, that the Lord spoke to him and said, My power works best in weakness. Why? Well, because when I think that I can pull myself up by my own bootstraps, where does that put God? Kind of behind me. It leaves him out of the picture. So, Paul is saying, I don't want that. I, I want the sufficiency of your grace to meet my need. And so, Lord, I want you to lead me. I want you. So I am weak. I'm going to be the least. I'm going to be humble. I am going to pull back and let you lead me. Let you guide me. I'm going to be the weak. I want you to be strong because that's where God shines. When we have failures, when we have difficulty, when we have problems, whether it be Spiritual, whether it be financial, whether it be flesh, physical, God shines the most bright, in a sense, when we put him at the front and we step back and let him do his work. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness 
so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weakness and in insults and hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Wow. I don't know that I want to, to always take pleasure in weakness or in insults or hardships or persecutions or troubles. We just put up with two years of that, right? Well, let's think back a little bit. You remember in 2021 when I did my prophecy update, I gave a lot of good spiritual guesses at when the Lord could come. It could have been 2021. And I gave all the reasons for that. And without going into a lot of that, I gave, again, um, a lot of things. But um, when you get to heaven because you guessed the right day and hour, um, what prize do you get? Oh, that's right. There is none. You get heaven regardless, right? So, okay, Kirk, so you were wrong. Yep, I'm wrong a lot. If you don't believe me, ask my wife. <clears throat> We don't know the day and the hour. We don't understand. But what we should do is prepare and get ready. So, Kirk, is the Lord coming back in 2022? I don't know. He didn't come back in 2021, even though I did all the math and you know all that other stuff. What I can say is this. God is gracious. He is merciful. And he must still want to reach other people with that mercy and that grace. And so <clears throat> we think back to you know, the last couple of years. I'm kind of a numbers guy. You guys know that. Thinking back to 2020, 2020 and uh, what is that a number of? What is 20 uh, a number of? Well, it, it's interesting because 21 is essentially three sevens. Seven being the number of completion or perfection. And seven times three is what? 21, hey, God, why didn't you complete, you know, um, the whole thing in 2021? Well, what is 2020? Well, it's one less than 2021, which means that it's really kind of a number of um, expectancy, which is uh, kind of interesting. We, we look towards the fulfillment in 2021. We hope for that. Oh, we, we want completion. Three is also the number of Trinity, God the Father, Son, and Spirit. And you think, okay, three, completion. Hey, let's all, you know, 2021. And we can go into all kinds of numbers, but it didn't happen. And what happened in uh, 2020? COVID. COVID. And we're all masked up. And we start thinking, oh, maybe the Lord's coming back a little early, you know. But we looked with, with expectancy. And then 2021. Well, it should be. Well, three times seven, 21, completion, completion, completion. Hey, we're all done. Should be over. But what is 2021? What does 21 look like when we think about the scriptures? How does it look at it? Well, <clears throat> it is an interesting number. 21, when you think about Egypt, Egypt is always a picture of what? The world. Okay. And when God called his people out of the world and into the promised land, oh, wait, they didn't get there. You know, um, for a long time, they wandered in the wilderness. Well, during that time, there were 21 major rebellions or sins as they wandered through the wilderness. <clears throat> On the 21st of the month of Nisan, God drowned Pharaoh and his armies. In the book of 1st and 2nd Kings, Jeroboam, who was uh, the first king of uh, northern Israel, um, he made the people to sin 21 different times. And um, the other king, Ahab, um, who also was there, uh, of course, had a lot of problems and sin, but uh, so the number 21, which we would think should be linked to completion, 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 let's get this done, is actually linked to rebellion and sin. Does that sound a lot like 2021? 
Does it sound like our world today that we are just in complete, total rebellion and in complete sin in 2021? So then what does 2022 look like? Yikes, huh? <clears throat> what can we expect in 2022? Well, let's think about what 22 means in the scripture. Well, the other king, Ahab, who was a very evil, evil king. In fact, it has been said that he is the worst king in the history of Israel. And I seem to be hearing some of those same things concerning our president today. Oh, he's the worst president in the history of America. I don't know that. And does it really matter? No, not really. Okay. But Ahab, man, he was awful because we get to read um, back in the Kings about him and how evil he was and, and uh, his wife Jezebel. But both Jeroboam and Ahab ruled and reigned for how many years? 22 years. I mean, yes, you can kind of, you can see where we're going with this. Okay, I'm glad you're still awake. You can do the math. It's not hard, is it? So 2022. So what does uh, 2020, or what does 22 represent? Um, well, there's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Maybe God is just waiting to use all of the alphabet, you know, and then he's going to say, okay, now we're done. You know, we can play these kinds of, uh, of games and oh, oh, try and figure things out. But what does it really mean when it comes right down to it? What does 20 or what does 20, 22 represent? It represents sin. And even more so than just sin, because that is represented in 21. It's representative of more of a disintegration, disintegration. And I really feel like that's where we're headed um, in the world today, in America today, that we are going to see things disintegrate just as the scriptures have said, just as God has indicated. A lot of people said, yeah, we made it through 2020. Let's get into 2021. I can't wait. Remember that? 2021 really wasn't any better. So what about 2022? I don't expect that 2022 is going to be any better. Why? Because things are disintegrating in our society. We have left God. We have boasted in ourselves. We have become so caught up in who we are that we don't need God anymore. We think we can, we can do this all on our own. We've got this. We're going to beat COVID, and yet, hey, it's still happening, right? Two years later, oh, we're going to do all these things, and we're going to follow the science. Well, where has that gone? We've gone from quarantining for 14 days to, to 10 days to, okay, well, now we just figured this out a couple weeks ago. You really only need to quarantine for five days because you were contagious a few days before that, and so if you add up those few days and then you add up the five days that you'd be home, that's basically about eight days. And that's about what we figure that you'd be contagious. So you really only need to go for five days. It's nuts. We shouldn't be following science. We should be following the Savior. So Paul would say, instead of boasting about all these things and what I know, or what you and I know concerning the things of the Lord, instead of boasting, oh, you guys don't understand, you don't get it. God's coming back and that's it. Yeah, you guys say that stuff all the time. Don't boast in that. Just boast in the grace and the mercy of God. What did Paul say the Lord told him? Three different times I begged the Lord, and each time he said to me, what? My grace is sufficient. My grace is all you need. So in 2022... I really believe that the Lord is simply just saying, hey, I want you to focus on my grace. You don't deserve it. You didn't earn it. There was no merits involved in it. I just gave it to you as a gift. Are there going to be hard times? I believe so. But God is good. Are there going to be difficulties? Yes, I believe so. 
but God is good. So what do we do when we face these things? I think what Paul said and what God told Paul here, not only is my grace all that you need, but what did Paul say in Philippians chapter 4? He said, I want you to rejoice in the Lord always. Again, what? Rejoice. Don't be anxious about the things that come in 2022. Don't be worried about them, but rather through prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving, oftentimes that gets forgotten. Paul said, yeah, you might not be able to rejoice in the situations, but I can rejoice in the Lord. And so when you feel that anxiety come, when you feel like you're going through that difficulty or that trouble, I want you to pray and I want you to seek the Lord. And then I want you to thank him. And then I want you to just let the peace of God guard your heart and guard your mind. Let his grace be sufficient for you in a world that is disintegrating. And if we can do that, how good is 2022 going to be? It's going to be amazing. Just like any day with the Lord is amazing. We get to have a great 2022 because we have Jesus. Amen? Amen. So, Father, thank you that when it comes to trusting you, that you have shared with us today. Thank you, Lord, that Paul was so willing to say, you know what? I'm just going to step back and I'm going to be the weak one. I'm going to be the one that delights in letting you lead, letting you shine through me. Father, let us not boast about how much we know or what we know, but rather, Lord, to let your grace flow freely, to not be anxious about anything, that might afflict us financially, physically, or spiritually. But rather, Lord, through prayer, supplication, and with thanksgiving, may we let our requests be made known to you and allow your peace to bring understanding, even when we don't understand. May we allow you to work and move. And may, Lord, your grace abound in us and through us so that others might see your goodness. Lord, let us not become proud in ourselves or in any ability we might have, but rather, Lord, be proud of you the author and the perfecter of our faith. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. We pray that that would rule in 22. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, God bless you. Again, Happy New Year. Why? Not because of the things of this world, but a Happy New Year because God is on the throne and he's coming back. He didn't come back in 21. Could it be 22? Maybe. We'll see. Lord bless you. Have a great week.